as the man. But this is a holding action. You don't get to be established as the man by beating a guy who already has three losses. A tougher fight than the public expects. They want to do well against him. Yeah, he does have a natural incentive to want to do well against him, but to me, than what you expect. In this case, it can't be a trap because you knew what it was. You sparred with him, been with him for years. You know what he is. How does the height do it good right now, Jim? Because uh, Mendez is doing some good, a good job of punching, like on the end of his punches. So count of those shots. Right now, he's not doing a good job of it. Like most Mexican fighters, or skillful Mexican fighters, get inside the opponent's arms, and most particularly, of course, the trademark Mexican punch, the left hook to the body. Try to set himself to land that shot, which is in the past. And the different thing you see right now is like Max is fluent. And that would be Estrada. He seems fluent when he throws his punches, whereas Mendez seems like he struggles with a punch. Mendez very freely said to us yesterday, I admire Estrada. Uh, I've been proud of the things that he's done because we competed together on the same team. We did to be on this card, fell out with an injury, and there was an empty space, which these two guys against other fighters. It happens because in the sparring, both guys also admitted to saying that Mendez was the puncher and Estrada is the boxer. So, or the counter puncher. So, we'll gentlemen. have to see what happens. Each other. We were drawn into a continuing series of fights in the these divisions and has fought very well. But nobody has yet managed to knock off Sorum Visai off the perch that he earned by first. So he's the kingpin that both of these fighters and others in this weight neighborhood look. One, two, three. He didn't show me enough diversity for him to be put on the number one pound for pound guy. He could fight coming forward, but he never shows or to the left or right. So I didn't never think he had deserved yet competition. But I do hear what you're saying about the absence of a, a complete style portfolio. And that's what Bach one and one or one and oh when I realized he was probably the best fighter. To me, to me you can be one dimensional and still be the best. If you beat everybody, which he was doing. But <clears throat> Andre Ward had not distinction. Right. Here Estrada is doing what he normally does. Class tells over time. And as rounds mount, he usually man, but I would never call Mike Tyson pound for pound the best because <laughs> nobody wasn't gonna beat him in his prime, but he wasn't showing you backing up going forward. He wasn't a pound for pound meaning that you could do everything and you're dumb. Two pound for pound <laughs> fighters in the world. Right now the top two pound for pound fighters in the world on almost every listing are Lomachenko and Terrence Cross. Listen for the bell, and gentlemen. I think Listen that for that bell. They fulfill the standard you're looking for. Well, they do. They fulfilled it back then. That's what my point was. Right, That's why right I didn't there. understand. Originally from Poland now living in the United States, Alexandra Magdash Lopes, and she is a practice Nick Wanakani was a practicing uh, attorney. That's pretty equally as rare, I think. Yep. We're in round three, and already it appears that competitive distance Mendez. Estrada has figured out what Mendez has probably already learned it, Roy. Yeah, what he's basically doing is he's in front of Mendez, so adjusting to that or making, countering that move that he makes Mendez do. Mendez. Four-punch combination for Estrada. Mendez fires back with a left hook. And you're looking at basically a, a technical clinic here from Juan Francisco Estrada. Look at two guys that are very technical and both of them pretty good punchers. HBO Boxing. Uh, we are commemorating a lot of things that have identified the, the telecam. Harold, I'm not telling you anything you don't know when I element of our telecast over these past 45 years and rest assured for whatever it means to you I don't think of the moment and to this point in the fight CompuBox finds Estrada landing called him he's landing 30 percent of his punches using the opponent to an 11 percent look all that different on paper Estrada's record 37 3 and 0 with 25 KOs Mendez record 28 3 and 2 with 20 KOs 
but what you do, and surely the level of competition has been just a little bit different. Yeah. Place them where he wants to, usually land them, or then he can step up and throw three and four punch in the combination. Estrada had a great fight in the loss with Chuckle Tito Gonzalez. Real tough, close loss against Sorg uh, Visay. Beat Quadras, beat Marquez. Juan Manuel Marquez, that's Hernan Tyson Marquez. I know him well enough that I can get something done. And already, as we come just to the fifth round of a Schedule 10, Estrada has landed 34 punches, excuse me, four punches in the fight to this point. That has been the case for Mean himself and his neighborly opponent. Making him punch so that he can counter. And that's just because Estrada's making harder, heavier contact, right? That, and he wants to punch. He wants to force uh, Mendez to punch so that he can land the counters. This is true Mexican-style boxing. See those body shots right there off of that hook to the head? That's really good. Were there times in your career, Roy, when you would say to yourself, I'm going to go Mexican-style here? All, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yes. Canelo Alvarez has been accused by some of the fighter. He proved that to everybody on the planet in the last fight he had against Triple G. He showed Triple G what Mexican style fighting really was about. I mean, Mexican style. Mexican style, you gotta go to. And Mexican style means Triple G by a But because they said Mexican style, you had to give it to Canelo. Juan Manuel Marquez was a brilliant and creative counter puncher. Counter punching was his style. Was he a Mexican style fighter? Yes, he was a Mexican style fighter. The only thing one more kids didn't have him, he had a great Mexican style, but he was a one punch knockout guy. Later in his career, we found out, we found him definitely was Mexican style. And we're having this discussion, of course, because we're watching the 140 pound weight class to move up to 147, where he has a belt now. time in your career, Roy? Uh, yeah, I was afflicted by it because I wanted Darius Mikulczewski to bring that WBO belt over here and put it on the line, but he wanted me to bring all three of my belts to not get in. Do you think Mikulczewski deserves entry into the of fame? Um, he dominated over there in Germany for a long time, so you could I thought he'd be in that situation. So you never know, man. Every fighter that's winning the world. The light heavyweight championship of the world from Chad Dawson with a spectacular knockout here on HBO and had some other thrilling performances here as well. We know Adonis and have spent time with him. So all three of us and everyone at HBO Boxing wants to extend their best wishes, wishes and, and by the way, you picked Vozdik to beat him. Yes, I did. I know Vozdik. I've been watching Vozdik for a long time. Vozdik beat Isaac Chalimba, who my chip. Uh, I've got it six to nothing, um, 60 to 54. All right, we're discussing a lot of boxing topics on this last night at ringside, and uh, uh, Harold's scorecard verifies that we see this as a fight which Estrada is controlling pretty pretty effectively a puncher. Uh, so elaborate on that because my impression was that his best weapon was his jab. Okay. Now, I'm glad you asked me that again, Jim. Um, the thing that happened is this is the compromise in the fight on two of the cards when the fight ended that most people thought he was kind of winning. Un has the the puncher's instinct or skills to finish. I know he feels as though he won the fight, but he didn't get the knockout. So he did, yeah, Jim, from the highlights I seen, looked like Fury was pretty dominant. And I expected Fury to be a little bit dominant, but I did expect him probably to get caught every now and then too. So I don't know how the two knockdowns play in the scoring of the fight. I remember it was training him. And I asked him one day, I said, is Tyson Fury any good? And he said, Jim, you're going to hate watching him. I think a lot of people will hate watching him. And he always defends. So go try to beat that. And it turns out Emmanuel was right. The next round in the fight, which would have been the eighth. So copy box numbers through the seventh show a tremendously one-sided Estrada edge over Mendez. It was getting bigger from round to round to round. And I think that's... ...declaring your winner by KO from Puerto Peñasco, Sonora, Mexico. El Cairo, Juan Francisco.